All right, let's talk about referencing in objects. Okay, now when I say referencing, I'm not talking about putting it on a display layer and then clicking reference so you can't click on it. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about going to file, reference editor. Okay, what the heck is this? Well, let's kind of start by talking about why it's important and then we're going to talk about kind of um, how to do it. So what referencing is, is if I open up the outliner here, I can see that all of these kind of these blue diamonds here indicate that this is referenced in. Okay, so for example, um, this character right here, okay, this character's name is Flower for a cartoon series that I'm making. I can see that she's got all the controls here. I can see that this is another character, um, another character, and so on and so forth. All these different characters. And there's all these different scenes. Okay, this is just one location. And then I've got about six different locations. So let's kind of talk about that. So let's say if this character right here, let's say if I decide to add an accessory like a hat to this character, okay? And I mean, that's just kind of a simple example. But if I add the hat, then in the other six scenes, I'd want that character to have a hat, right? Or let's say if I changed the textures or if I changed uh, maybe some of the controllers. Well, now it's kind of a mess because I've got all of these different scenes that this character is in. That's not going to be consistent. I'm going to have to import her kind of every time. So what it's best to do is this. I can see that I have the character right here in her own scene. Okay, so this is the um, her own projects folder. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So... If I come here, well, let me see. Okay, if I come here, I can see that all my characters, so this character's name is Flower. She has her own projects folder. And if I open up scenes, I can see that this is the file that's saved right there, okay? And if I open up another character, let's say Floyd, he's got his own project folder. And then here's his scene as well, okay? And so each character has their own scene that they're just basically sitting in the center of the scene. Okay, now this scene here is these characters are referenced in. So if I want to add a hat to flower, I wouldn't add a hat in this scene. Um, let's just say though I was animating the character. So let's say if, okay, if she was back here and let's say if I, if I started to animate this scene, so I press S to set a keyframe and then bring this forward and then have her like, oh, hey, what's up guys? Looking around, I animate her. Okay, and she's kind of moving around, she's doing her thing. Now, instead of me editing and altering her character right here, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go to this scene and say, okay, uh, kind of think about like the characters back in the dressing room, if you will. And I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna get make sure that she's got her hat on. So I'm gonna go up here and insert edge loop. You know, really do whatever I want. Make this as complex as I want. I could even change that. You know, the rigging controls or whatever. Um, so there we go. There's her hat. She's ready for uh, everything. And if I test this, I'm like, you know what? Um, okay, the hat doesn't come along for the ride. So I might have to kind of get a little bit more complex with this. And I'm going to call this hat. Whoop. And let's see, where, where would I put this? So if I go into here, um, root control, I can see. Um, let's see if I go into root flower body. OK, I, probably if I put it in there. So if I go in here, flower body. OK, let's see if it comes along for the ride now. Aha, yeah, there it comes along for the ride. That's good. So I'm kind of like altering it. You know, I'm figuring out here and I can make some complex changes. Now, if I save this, okay, if I go to file, save scene. And notice I'm not saving as. I'm saving scene because I need it to be called exactly whatever I referenced into the other scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save scene. And now watch this. So if I go back to this scene here, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, well, yeah, what I'll do is I'm just going to save this scene, pretending like, oh, I want this animation. Okay, so I'll just go to save scene. And I, I now here I could save as if I wanted to. 
Okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and save it. File, save scene. And now I'm gonna just open up this exact scene. Okay, so I'm gonna go file, open. And here it is, school inside, open. And now she should have her movement, but she should also have her hat on, okay? Which is cool is I never touched this scene to put the hat in. I strictly just edited her main scene, her main file. And now, but since that's referenced in, it's going into this file and it should just update. So it's, it might take a little bit of time. I've got a lot of textures. I got a lot of complexity here. Um, so let that kind of think. And then we'll see if she has the hat on. I can see down at the lower left-hand corner, this is the progress bar. And it's still thinking. And that's totally okay. Maybe I'll just pause the video while it's still loading. Okay, I promise there was no trickery while I paused the video. I can see that it's actually still loading in the textures, but you can see that she has her hat on. And I can see that the movement, if I scrub through, I'm gonna just wait for it to load the textures, but the movement is still gonna be there. So this is really cool. If you think about it, I've got, I think, six characters here. Yeah, here's, and now here's her movement. So you can see the movement's all there, but because she's referenced in, I didn't have to update it on this one. So that means that if I had this character in five different scenes, all of the time you see this character, she's gonna have the hat on, okay? And I could get as complex as I wanted to. Now, how do we do this? Very simple, okay? So on this one, on this initial scene, I can just save this, whatever I want. File, save scene as, and call it whatever I want. Then on the other scene, I'm just going to go to File, Reference Editor. Then here I'm going to go to File, Create Reference. Then I'm going to go find that file. So I'm going to find Flower. I'm going to find, now notice I named it underscore reference. You don't have to name it that. You can name it whatever you wanted. And then I'm just going to hit Reference. And that way, now it's going to reference from that other file. By the way, I do not move any of the files that are for her texture, I leave that in the other folder and her own projects folder. So each one of these characters has their own projects folder. You can see that I referenced in all the characters and I even referenced in this background, this school. So let's say if I wanted to change the lighting in the school or if I wanted to change the materials or even the modeling or anything about the school, um, this environment, I would open up the environment scene that's just by itself, has no characters in. I would make my edits there, save it, and then when I open up this file, all of those edits should magically just appear. So now if you think about this, this is really cool. We could have, um, I could have, let's say, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six characters here. Um, and what I could do is have six people, six different artists working on each character. And they could be making edits to the character, they could be reworking their textures, they could be reworking their controllers, whatever we want. And then it's all referenced into this file. The only thing I'd have to do is go to open scene and then poof, like magic, I can see all the edit edits that all of my team have been working on. Um, it's not like we have to transfer files and stuff. Now, granted, it does have to be, you know, the computers have to somehow be linked onto a network. Um, in this case, I have all the files on the same computer, so it's kind of easy. But I feel like I want you to get in the thought process of um, not, hey, I'm gonna import this character into the scene and then I'm gonna import this character into the scene. And then if you e import each one, then it's, it becomes a mess. Because then once again, if you add the hat to this character, and let's say you have 10 other scenes, you're gonna have to remember to add the hat on each scene. 
And obviously the hat's just kind of a simple example, but if you made a significant change, let's say something that was super important, like you wanted to change this guy's eyeball color, okay? And that needs to be consistent on all of them. Instead of having to re-import them and redo the animation, okay, let's not kind of blow that off because when you do it this way, you can really keep all the animation. And just like I was showing here, so the animation's done, I'm just kind of adding to the character, I'm kind of changing some things here or there, um, but then they, that doesn't need to be redone. So hopefully that was helpful. I think this can be a very confusing concept if you don't have a lot of things to work with or if you're not working on a big kind of production team, I think it's kind of hard to see the importance of referencing. So hopefully that was helpful. Please leave any comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Videos like this every week, I wanna just kinda of help you guys out and just kinda of blow this up huge. So thanks for listening and talk to you next time.